Well, thank you very much. Thank you, TEDx Alcobendas, <laughs> which has been very kind to come to my home and ask me to talk on Afghanistan. Be sure that it's complicated. It's not easy. Well, an Afghan ambassador is standing here, you should not fasten your seat belt. Everything will be okay. <laughs> but I tell you one thing, that I make it very simple if I can. As simple as possible. You will ask me how you can make Afghanistan problem simple. Even the world is watching it and cannot make it simple, but I try. Two, three, or four things keep in mind when you talk about Afghanistan. Number one, a strategic importance of the country. Very important. Location is important, whether in it's your body as a heart or in the world as geography. Number two, the love of the people to their faith. You're faithful, all Muslims, but not at all Islamists or fanatic. Three, all love of their culture. We love our culture, traditions, hospitality, contingency, respecting the elders. And number four, love of the freedom of the land. We have given millions of us, believe me, it's not an exaggeration, to keep our independence, as you did it. Everybody loves independence and freedom. We do too. Four, or five, I don't know, four, <laughs> that we indeed have been very much a victim of the interference of the neighbors. Interference is bad. You interfere France, it's not good. France interferes you, it's not good. Location, love of land, love of freedom, love of culture, love of religion and faith, and interference. And I tell you that. The other thing which you'll find it out is that all these combined make it easier to understand the people. A strategic importance. As I told you, your knee is not that important as your heart. Location is important. Your beloved is in your heart, not on your knee. I tell you, this has been a very important location. From 2,000 years ago, Alexander the Great crossed Afghanistan because of the location. It was heart of Asia, and still it is heart of Asia. It was a crossroad, a silk road. Conquerors were crossing, poets were crossing, philosophers were crossing, musicians were crossing, all were crossing that land. This is why it was sometime blessing, sometime a curse. If you have in your body, heart, with hatred, it is a curse. If you have got love in your heart, it's a blessing. Alexander the Great crossed the country, poets, writers, all philosophers, that was a blessing. Still it is, which is important. And then after that, many others, Mongolians, Arabs, they all crossed Afghanistan, not necessarily to beat us, but to cross it. This is why it was called crossroad. I wish my country was not in that location, was behind Cordoba to not see all these problems. It was hard. The history of my land is full of blood because of my geography. 
the body of a man will be full of blood if the heart is beating wrongly. One day you've got love in your heart. You love it. One day you've got hatred in your heart. Oh, you are gone. I'm talking from the, my heart. Don't think that I'm Bahador is talking. I'm a human being. I've gone through many ups and downs in my country. Oh, when I was young, the Russians invaded Afghanistan. A relative peace it was. We had a king, nice, you know, his schools open. We had this, that. We had musicians, writers. I was uh, very young, did my BMA, BA, and I was a narrator in radio. My father was a poet. My mother was nice, going out. Everybody was happy, but poor. Poverty is not a problem if you have got, indeed, a will to overcome. Underground, we have been always rich. Still, we are rich. Because of lack of leadership in Afghanistan, in a way, lack of moral and spiritual leadership, lack of honest leaders, all the whole resources underground never came up. We stayed the poorest in the world. Always pray that God may give you honest leaders. A leader is like the father of the family. The father is not honest. Wife escapes. <laughs> Kids escape. When the father is honest, the family will be happy. And moreover, when the father is visionary, the family grows. The Russians invaded. I was young. I told my wife, honey, I'm leaving for the war because of the love of the country, location, love of culture, all these things together I want to fight. She told me, por favor. <laughs> I went to Afghanistan. I was in Afghanistan, in the mountains, going up and down. You know, at home, because we were not allowed, because the roads were occupied with my poor donkey or horse or on foot. Hundreds of kilometers I walked. My poor donkey didn't like me at all. <laughs> but I was one thing having, believe me. I've told you before. One thing I had always in my back. A notebook, a thick notebook. For 14 years, a thick notebook. Going to the mountains, mobilizing people, talking to people, talking to a cobbler, talking to a poet, talking to a... While bombarding, killing... I was writing in my, po in my diary every almost two hours. You know what? What is going on? What is in the heart of the people? Why war? And to whom was I was writing that? My son is here. He knows that. He's translating it to my beloved wife. Always writing to my wife. Oh, my dear the sky of my country is like hanging ocean. The rainbows are beautiful. The kids are nice. Shepherds are good. Bomb bombardment, war. What we should do because of location. And ultimately we won the war. We lost 1.5 million people because of love of freedom. We were called Mujahideen. Never we were fanatics. Never. Otherwise, which fanatic is writing diary for his wife? So, we won the war with the help of the world. America, Spain, this, that, European countries. You know what we were getting from escape of Spain during the war as a help? Anybody can guess. Money? No. Weapons? No. Mules. <laughs> we were getting mules from here to go to the mountains, but they could not go well as our small donkeys. <laughs> anyway, we won the war with the help of the world. We entered Kabul, 
In the first press conference, I was there with the great hero of Afghanistan. Oh, my goodness, he was a great man, a human being, like Mandela, like Gandhi, like this, like all. A young man called Commander Massoud. When we, he announced during the 92 that, well, we won the war. But we came out and he told me, where are our friends? I said, I don't know. Where are those who helped us during the war? I said, I don't know. You don't know? I'm sorry. Why? Because I didn't know. Will they come back? I don't know. That was called abandonment policy or leaving a nation alone. Never let your friends alone until you finish the job. Whether it's your husband, your son, your friend, never let them alone. Halfway. Because you will be bitten by the same snake twice from the same hole if you leave them alone. We were alone. Oh, believe me, we were alone. And it is so poisonous. You want freedom, but you lose what? Peace. When you win freedom and you lose peace, you win war and you lose peace, you lose both. My friends, what happened? The war started again. Because of location, Taliban, you have heard, then Al-Qaeda after that, bah, we were in real problem. And then, one night or one day I was with that commander, great commander of Afghanistan, sitting, two Arabs came and they just had a vest, boom. Everybody was killed, including that. I survived with one eye, one ear. Still, I've got shrapnels in my body because of the war. Terrorism started. Then 9-11, a new phase. America and every country rushed to Afghanistan to help us. And now, 9-2014, as I'm standing here on this beautiful red carpet of TEDx, Alco Bendas, <laughs> my country indeed, is again in a kind of fear and hope. My friends want to leave for good reason or bad reason. Fear because we think if you leave us alone with whatever reason, the snake will bite us again twice from the same hole. All of us because of location. Afghanistan is the heart of Asia. If there is a problem, it will be a problem in Asia and the world. Don't do it. Number two, neighbors, especially Pakistan, the army of Pakistan will just help again. And you know, at the expense of Pakistan will create problem, Taliban will be sent. Three, we lose what we have achieved. Now, I tell you that the hope is we have achieved parliament, we have achieved, we had just 2,000 people going to school, boys, now 8 million are going to school. Boys and girls, 350,000 soldiers, 4,000 women, 150,000 police, you name it. It's universities, colleges, music, 60 channels of TV, 160 channels of radio. Look at that. We should not lose it. This is why we should not be alone again. And I'm close to the side of the hope. I'm optimist. 2014, whatever, the nation will live because of that, that they've got a heart, a will. And I'm also close to that hope because of a beautiful quatrain of my father. I want to read it in my language and then translate it and conclude. Yatimi. Dark Mandi Bina Wahi Parawar Dastili Sahra Sadahi Mani Zanhar Askaf Shamu Mead Mani Zanhar Askaf Shamu Mead Agar Khahi 
رسی روزه بجای اگر خواهی رسی روزه بجای Oh, my countrymen, oh, rich and poor, oh, the people of the world, if you are in a problem or not, never, ever allow the candle of hope to slip from your palm and heart. As long as you have got a hope, you win the world. If you are disappointed, you lose it, even if you have got the whole world. Never and ever allow the snake to bite you twice. We are hopeful. We go on. Whatever happens, despite I lost my eye and my ear, but still I am alive and in the morning I wake up and make, you know what, a coffee for my wife, which is so nice. And I tell you that a nation has been grateful of what the world has done so far. Let us pray for those boys and girls of NATO and Afghans who lost their lives in Afghanistan. Lost their lives for the world. They are global soldiers. And let us also pray for those innocent civilians who lost their lives. We're all together. Because of that location. And I tell you that we win because wrong cannot stay long. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.